Back in the 16th century, various kings were building ships for the purpose of prestige. These large and powerful vessels were the centrepieces of their fleets, but this habit wasn't confined to kings. The larger and more powerful independent city-states were also in the business of showing off. The various cities on the northern German coast were part of the Hanseatic League, and with us also building big ships. Lübeck was particularly prone to building these vessels. Around 1520, the latest iteration of this trend was launched, the somewhat oddly named Jesus of Lübeck, as I'm pretty sure he never actually visited that city. The ship was rated at seven to 800 tons burthen, somewhat larger than the Mary Rose, but smaller than the Henry Grassadier of England. At 140 foot long and 30 foot wide, the biggest features of note were its deep, for the time, draught of up to 20 feet, and a correspondingly very high, almost cliff-like, sides and four masts. After a couple of decades showing off the wealth and power of Lübeck, in 1544 she found herself up for sale. The comparisons with the English ships will now make sense. England under Henry VIII was at war with, drumroll please, France. Try not to be too shocked. However, France could outbuild the Royal Navy, and so Henry had been leasing various large Hanseatic ships, the Struze of Danzig, Mary of Hamburg, Christopher of Bremen, Marianne, and the Jesus of Lübeck. And no prizes for guessing where most of them came from. All bar the Christopher had been with the English fleet for about a year, and the lease came with an option to buy the ship at the end of the period. Ideally, Henry actually wanted the Christopher of Bremen, but it wouldn't be ready for a while, needed a bit of refitting, and so his agent showed up with an offer for Lubeck's ship. This offer was accepted, and the ship duly sailed for England, where its high sides would allow it to be equipped with a full-length gun deck consisting of a cannon, two demi-cannon, a culverin, two demi-culverins, and three sakers, all in bronze, plus ten iron heavy guns and thirty-two anti-personnel swivel guns. Whilst now at about the same displacement as the Mary Rose, which had been rebuilt in the intervening time, she was slightly less heavily armed, but that also made her much more stable, which was just as well as the next year the French fleet showed up off the Isle of Wight. The slightly inconclusive Battle of the Solent saw the French withdraw at the cost of the aforementioned Mary Rose, which the Jesus of Lübeck would then be employed in trying to raise, along with the Samson, by placing ropes underneath the wrecked ship at low tide, attached to the two floating ships. A high tide, in theory, would then lift the Mary Rose off the seabed, and the whole assembly could be moved to shallower waters, where as the tide went out, the ropes could be shortened, and the process done again and again, and so on didn't actually work, and so instead the ship went on to serve as flagship of the royal ships that were patrolling the English Channel for the next two decades. But by the 1560s, she was seen as increasingly out of date and expensive to run. Then, one John Hawkins appeared in the court of the English monarch, who was now Elizabeth I, asking for royal approval for his latest business venture. Having almost run out of natives in South America and the Caribbean through a combination of imported disease and sheer brutality, the Spanish were now in the market for African slaves. Hawkins proposed to use the ship to bring a cargo of slaves to the Spanish colonies. Although they were technically forbidden from trading with him by Spanish authorities who wanted to corner the market for Spanish transported slaves, which would then be sold at a higher price, all for themselves. The informal arrangement with some of the Spanish colonial ports was for the English to turn up with a relatively powerful ship or ships to threaten the locals into doing business under duress and just hope that a large Spanish fleet didn't pop up nearby. To aid with this, Hawkins cut down the ship's towering fore and aft castles to improve her sea keeping. To be fair, he had actually been hoping for one of the more modern royal ships, the old Jesus of Lübeck wasn't his first choice, but modernising it was a condition of the royal ascent, as Elizabeth had sensed the chance to get one of her oldest ships turned into a slightly more useful combatant through modernisation without her having to spend any money on it. Along with the Solomon, Tiger and Swallow, Hawkins set sail in late 1564 and completed a round trip to great profit, Hawkins' second success at the trade. 
1567, he therefore set out on a third mission, along with the minion, William and John, Swallow, Angel, and Judith, the last of which was under the command of one Francis Drake. However, a storm damaged the flagship on the way to Africa, and after various incidents in Africa itself, they finally arrived in the Caribbean in 1568, where another storm further damaged the ship, leading to the discovery of live fish swimming happily in the water that was sitting above the ballast in the hold thanks to the size of all the leaks. Eventually, fetching up in the port of San Juan de Elua, things got considerably worse as a heavily armed Spanish treasure fleet showed up two days later. On the 23rd of September 1568, the Spanish launched a surprise attack on the English formation, with both sides moored in a long line. Outnumbered and outgunned, the Minion and Judith managed to cast free, the former picking up the survivors of the Jesus of Lubeck, which had put up a magnificent fight, actually destroying the two largest Spanish vessels and making it clear at the moorings itself. But it had then been caught in a crossfire from Spanish shore batteries and with two of its masts destroyed, it was left in place as a kind of shield, which allowed the two smaller ships a safe route of escape, and also served to aid in the evacuation, as they were able to come along the unengaged side and be sheltered from incoming fire. Battered, leaking, and settling slowly, the hulk would be examined, inventory stripped, and then sold off by the Spanish officers, after which it was probably broken up for timber, its final legacy being that its loss was the catalyst of the burning hatred that would drive Drake and Hawkins first to infuriate, and then later to defeat, the Spanish in later years. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.